I drive a lot of cars for my job, and one thing that I think about is, of course, how do I feel behind the wheel? But the other big thing I think about as I'm changing vehicles on a weekly basis is, how am I showing up to other people? What sort of impression am I making driving this versus what I was driving last week? That, of course, is often based on brand perception, which, let's be real, often has a lot to do with looks, and that is a really interesting story in this. This is the 2025 Toyota Camry. It starts the all new ninth generation. We actually brought you two walk around videos back in November, which you'll know if you're subscribed to this channel. And if you're not subscribed, please take care of that right now. Back then we were in the studio. Today we're out in the real world, which means I'm gonna have to apologize in advance for any traffic noise. I think we will have some traffic noise and I'll try to just talk over it. So today I'm actually getting to drive it and I'm getting a better sense of what it might feel like to actually live with this vehicle. I'm thinking it might feel pretty good. For one thing, it's looking a lot sharper than the old Camry. I used to think the face was sort of friendly, but not the most cohesive looking. I've called it affably jumbled, a phrase I'm pretty proud of. This is a lot more business-like. We've maybe got a little bit of the Lexus spindle grill thing going on here. I can see some family resemblance. Toyota is calling this the hammerhead front face. And we can see we've got these C-shaped headlights, particularly these DRLs and the way they flow into the strip all the way across the middle. That's very fashionable right now. Think of like Lucid's or the new Elantra with that big light bar across. Very modern looking and echoes of the sleek new Prius. From the side here, we can see that the hood now extends to meet the vertical plane formed by the grille, so it makes it look more assertive and a little bit more forward-leaning. Not a lot else has changed from the profile view for this latest generation Camry, except that these window surrounds now extend further past the rear door line, which I think really helps emphasize this sloping sort of coupe-like roof. This is the XLE trim, so it's got 18-inch wheels. 16s are standard, and the top one, XSE, gets 19s. I love this color, ocean gem. It's a great turquoise that really sparkles. One interesting thing is that on the XSE trim, you can get a two-tone paint job. It's an extra cost, of course, but you can get a black metallic roof to go with one of four colors, including ocean gem, and that's gonna make it look really sporty. There are actually a number of sporty touches for the XSE, most of which are shared with the SE as well. For example, both of those would have exposed dual exhaust tips down here. For now, let's go see how this XLE drives. The 2025 Camry is only available as a hybrid, and Toyota does have a long history of hybrids. If you picture New York taxi cabs, those are almost all Toyota hybrids these days. This, though, has the latest, the fifth generation of the Toyota hybrid system, and this is the first sedan ever to get it. So, the Camry has a two and a half liter four-cylinder engine paired with two electric motors if it's front-wheel drive. That makes 225 horsepower. If it's all-wheel drive, it actually gets a third electric motor in the rear, and that's going to make 232 horsepower. And the really interesting thing is that this is electronic all-wheel drive, not mechanical. So that means it's still going to give you that peace of mind of the traction. I know a lot of people feel much more comfortable when they have all-wheel drive, but it's not going to be so damaging to your fuel economy. In fact, Toyota is estimating 50 miles per gallon for the all-wheel drive and 51 front-wheel drive, so barely a difference. Both front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive are offered on all four of the Camry trims, so you could get the base model and add all-wheel drive. It's an extra cost of $1,525 regardless of your trim. They also all have an eCVT, so it's an electronically controlled continuously variable transmission. So that's for fuel economy purposes and means you know I'm not feeling anything in the way of shifts, nor should I be. What I am noticing is when I wanna go from say 35 up to 55 because the speed limit is changing as I approach curves and then exit those curves and there are a lot of locals out here who want to go the speed limit which is very reasonable then you really you hear it working and, and you feel it but accelerating from slower speeds up to 35 40 ish no problem very smooth so this is the first time that I'm ever driving the all-new Camry, 
And what I'm really focusing on here is what's new for this latest generation. That's also something that's gonna be of interest if you're a current Camry owner of any generation and you're looking for a 2025 or onward. What's different? So a few things, the suspension has been retuned. And there are two different tuning versions. I'm currently in the XLE trim. So I think of it as L for luxury. This is one of the comfort grades. This suspension is meant to be more comfortable. It does give a nice pleasant ride feels planted, handling is good. I'm interested to try the sport tune suspension in the SE or XSE shortly too. So maybe we'll circle back with some extra footage of that if I get a chance to drive one of those. But right now, the XLE, I'm still enjoying these twisty turny roads and I'm liking the comfortable ride. Normal, eco, and sport drive modes are standard on the 2025 Camry. Each one has its own dedicated button right here behind the gear shifter. This also has an EV mode. It only works at 25 miles an hour and under, which I can't safely do on this road. So, I will mention I must have lane keep steering assist on because it does keep kind of nudging me back into the lane if I'm going over. It's a firm nudge but it's not impossible to override which I think is really good this is helpful because it you know it lets you know maybe you're not quite doing the right thing but if the system were to get confused by old lane lines or something like that it would still allow you the driver to handle the situation appropriately so talking about how it feels to spend time in a vehicle, of course, comfort and convenience features are going to be a big part of that. So we've pulled over to address some of those. Now, as I said, this is the XLE. So it's got these leather and microfiber, I think it's called Dynamica material seats. You can see a little bit of it here. As you know, I'm not wild about seats that are not leather, but I like that this is not in a spot where I'm likely to spill anything. So I can still wipe off if I spill my coffee on the seat. I don't love it inside the door. I, I think I get what they're going for. For me, it doesn't quite pull it off. It just doesn't really look as premium as I would like it to, especially for one of the two higher grades. In general, I do feel like Toyota's cabins tend to be a little less premium than some competitors like Honda's, for example. I am really liking these ventilated seats today in this hot California sun. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are standard. We've got the bigger touch screen here and I think it looks great. It's not too big like some of the ones we've seen in the Tacoma and the Sequoia, for example. And I love the way that it sort of flows into the dash. I think that's a really nice effect. Steering wheel, leather wrapped and heated, which would be nice on a very different day from today. It's not the biggest of the sedans in its class. Um, I, you know, I could reach the other side, which is not always true, but I like the position of this console cover, pretty good space here. I feel I could relax and sort of let adaptive cruise take the wheel for a little bit, obviously with my hands on the wheel and my eyes on the road, and I'd be very comfortable here. This is also the first Camry hybrid to get the panoramic power tilting moonroof, which is a very nice feature goes all the way back there so your rear seat passengers can also enjoy it which that's a nice touch maybe the most important point about this all new camry is its pricing toyota tells us this will come at a base msrp of twenty eight thousand four hundred dollars and that represents a price cut compared to the 2024 camry hybrid which is wild that almost never happens and especially not when you're kicking off a whole new generation full update very interesting stuff. This actually comes in close to the base model of the Honda Accord for 2024, and I mean the non-hybrid Accord. The Accord Hybrid for 2024 started more like $33,000. Of course, it is bigger and more spacious, but some folks might prefer the styling of this, not to mention, of course, the price point. So what do you think? Is the Camry Hybrid now the best looking vehicle in its class? We want to hear from you and we'd also love it if you would subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our full video reviews or our reports from drive programs like this one.